welcome to to the point let's continue our discussion on folk paintings in india varli painting the name of the painting it comes from the people who have been carrying the painting tradition so that is around 2500 to 3000 bc and this people they are called as varlis indigenous people that occupy mainly the gujarat maharashtra border so this paintings they have a very close resemblance to mural paintings of bhim betka in madhya pradesh this varli paintings are ritualistic paintings and they have a central motif of a chaukat or chauk which is surrounded by the scenes portraying fishing hunting farming dances animals trees and festivals so among the goddesses phalagatta the goddesses of fertility is drawn and among the male gods the spirits that have taken human form are represented traditionally the paintings are drawn on the walls using a very basic graphic and that includes a triangle circle and a square so these shapes they are inspired from the nature like a circle is inspired from sun and the moon triangle form a conical shaped trees or mountains and the square from a sacred enclosure or piece of land the base is made of mixture of mud branches and cow dung and that gives it a red ochre color for painting only white pigment is used which is made of mixture of gum and rice powder the wall paintings are usually done for auspicious occasions like harvest and wedding so with time the popularity of warli paintings it has resulted in this being that is painted on a cloth on a base of red or black background using a white poster color tanka painting presently belonging to the indian states of sikkim himachal pradesh ladakh region and arunachal pradesh tanka were originally used as a medium for reverence and that evoked the highest ideals of buddhism so tanka paintings it were traditionally made by the buddhist monks and by a particular ethnic group and this painting it has now spread a great number of people and to an extent it has been commercialized also the earnings from the paintings are used not only to keep the art form alive and sustains the artist but also it helps the monasteries tankas are painted on a base of cotton canvas the colors used in the paintings they have their own significance for example red it stands for intensity of passion so whether it may be for love or hatred golden is for birth life or birth and white is for serenity and black it depicts anger and green represents consciousness and yellow it shows compassion once the painting is done it is often framed in a colorful silk brocade tankas can be divided into three types the first kind it shows life of buddha from his birth to his enlightenment and the second kind is more abstract it represents buddhist beliefs of life and death including the wheel of life the third kind represents paintings that are used for offerings to the deities of meditation manjusha painting so this art form it belongs to bagalpur region of bihar so it is also known as angika art where ang refers to one of the mahajan pada since snake motifs are always present it is called snake painting manjusha painting it all it is also called as snake painting and this paintings are executed on the boxes of jute and paper pad painting so pad painting it is pre- predominantly found in rajasthan and it is a scroll type art it is religious in nature and it comprises of drawings of local deities babuji and deva narayan it is painted with vegetable colors on a long piece of cloth and that long piece of cloth is called as and that pad is 15 feet or 30 feet long and the subjects they have a very large eyes and a round face they are a pompous and joyful narrative and it is a scene of procession and common cherial scroll painting this painting it is indigenous to telangana state and it is a type of nakashi art the scrolls they are depicted as a continuous story like comics or ballad 
by Baladir community. The common themes are Hindu epics and Puranic stories. The artist used the scroll painting to narrate the stories along with the music as they move to different places and they are often huge in size going up to 45 feet in height and it has been accorded the geographical indication status in 2007. Pithora paintings. The paintings they are done by some tribal communities of Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. So these paintings are painted in the walls of houses to bring peace and prosperity. They are drawn on special family occasions as a ritual and the depiction of animals are common especially horses. Saura paintings Orissa. So they are made by a Saura tribe of Odisha and they are similar to Warli paintings. The Saura wall paintings are called Italians or Icons and they are dedicated to Idital that is the main deity of Sauras. The paintings it is done mostly in white while the background of the painting it is red or yellow in color. The colors are extracted from minerals and plants. The human shades are geometrical and they are stick-like. The designs it gave fashioned in the recent time with lots of t-shirts, female clothing and so on which features Saura style designs. And hence we can see that India has a long tradition of art and paintings which depicts the essential things about our culture. And there are also various schools, some even overlap and the artists who are involved in the making of these paintings, they are skilled beings. And currently some of the arts, they have been a larger scope of survival. But a few middle class Indians want to invest in good quality art. So the government and various centers of the art, they need to take steps and make art and paintings a matter of cultural heritage and that should be disseminated among people. See you in the next session with some other interesting topic. Thank you.